Good morning! I am Wayworn Worm, and welcome to my channel. Today I've got five topics that I want to talk to you about uh, briefly, although those may be relative terms. This may be a Matt Coville short video, i.e. still fairly long. But I want to first talk a little bit about my office, and then move into talking about miniatures, wargaming, and the fact that I consider myself wargaming adjacent. And then ending it off with some good news. So, the first thing, my office. I've had my office for about two years. And it has remained mostly the same in that time. Uh, one or two things have been taken out, uh, five or ten things have been added, and the biggest change has been I'm slowly unpacking, and I'm still unpacking. And I know some of you might say, well, if you've had it in a box for two years and haven't needed it, you don't need it. And I counter that with, there, were, there have been times where I've needed stuff and couldn't find them. Because I forgot they were in a box. Later remembered they were in a box. And then got mad because I could have used it when I needed it. But um, that changed about a week ago. So my in-laws got rid of this large um, sectional couch that they had. Uh, that was in a big L shape in their house, and bloody, bloody, blah. Long story short, my wife and I ended up with this couch that we're using two of the sections to be a couch and one section as a love seat. And we are trying to donate the couch right now, which I'm learning is surprisingly difficult difficult where we live it's really hard to donate furniture that even like brand new furniture that's just for some reason that's really hard to do around here and that kind of baffles me but anyway we're getting rid of the couch part of it because the couch is admittedly broken and that's part of why it's so difficult to donate it. But the love seat I actually brought up here into my office. However, due to the length of the love seat, there's actually only one place that I could put it that's not in the way. And so I had to rearrange a lot of things and move most of all of my bookshelves. And the cat tree that one of my cats really loves, that also had to move. And sitting right in the middle of all of those things was the air conditioning unit. The one that I've complained about in the last couple of videos because it was about six inches behind me and it was so loud that it made my recording, it made it hard to record. I know uh, listening through the audio of those videos where I was complaining about it, you guys didn't hear it, which is wonderful. But it was loud enough that it just kept knocking me off track, which is already too easy to do. I don't need things making that easier. It is now about six or seven feet away from me. It's still loud, but less loud. And not immediately behind me. So, that's sort of that on that. Um... That was way too many that's. But I should only need the air conditioner for like another week or two before it starts getting cool enough that 
I can put it away until next June or so. And the other good thing about having a couch, other than it forced me to reevaluate where I put my AC unit and created a need for me to have more extension cords in my office because old house, lack of outlets upstairs, which is where my office is, um, is the fact that I'm getting back into miniature painting and I've been doing it in our little media entertainment room because one that's where the tv is well one of the tvs it is where the tv that has cable is it is also um it's a small room it's generally out of the way and i don't really bother anyone when i'm up there as long as i put all of my stuff away and that's where the issue of me painting minis in that room is. I generally only paint for about an hour or so. And depending on what I'm doing, the paints not, might not be fully dry when I'm done. Or any of a thousand things. But I have to pack all of the minis back up either into the nice case with foam inserts that I have or the box that's holding the 40 or 50 miniatures that I want to get painted for a uh, big climactic battle that's coming up in the D&D &D session or D&D &D game that I run in one or two sessions. It depends on how quickly they get through... The area that they're currently going through and I'm about to make that quicker and easier on them so having to put it all away every night wasn't ideal but now that I have something to sit on that's not my office chair and you know my the problem with my office chair is the way it's set up it's really only good to use to be at the desk and my desk is covered with my computer stuff so it's not good to paint miniatures on I have a small little table that I'm using for that but I now have a love seat I can comfortably sit in the love seat I can either watch stuff on my computer or I have an iPad that I can set up like on the corner of the little table and paint and watch that. So I paint Reaper miniatures stuffs, um, specifically their bones line, and I could sing its praises for hours. Absolutely love Reaper bones. Um, one of the really cool things about it is it's designed to be easy to paint. You don't have to prime it. Uh, it's very forgiving. It's also, their stuff's rather inexpensive, and I mean that in the best way. Um, like I'm going to be talking a little bit more about Games Workshop when we get into the wargaming part of this video. And Games Workshop has ridiculous prices, in my opinion. Like, they, they have this thing called the Varen Guard, which is some sort of mounted chaos thing in the bobber for I think their Age of Sigmar game. And you can get three of them for a hundred dollars. Whereas 
my bones stuff. Well, I've only really used their um, Kickstarters, and they've got Bones 4 Kickstarter going on right now, and I will make sure that I link to that because uh, Bones Kickstarters are awesome. Uh, the, the average price of the minis with how they've been hitting their stretch goals ends up being like just over a dollar per miniature and they and there's usually like a 10 or 15 dollar um addition where you can get like 20 paints so it's super great um but yeah reaper is awesome um i start i'm first heard about them at PAX a few years ago and I funded the Bones 2, Bones 3, and now Bones 4 miniatures. And with the Bones 2, my wife and I got most of their stuff. For Bones 3, we funded at a level where we got almost all of their stuff and bones four we're going a little later on but they're really awesome and as i mentioned you know generally to get their core set it's like a hundred dollars but you get pretty close to a hundred minis and then they've got a bunch of extras that are generally 10 or $15 to add on or these other like supplementary packs of like 30 or 40 miniatures that, that all fit into a certain theme for like 50 more bucks. It's pretty great. And I, I very much love their minis. As I said, they're easy to paint. They're forgiving if you make mistakes, which is always great. And as far as minis go, they're inexpensive. However, they are a little floppy. And what I mean by that is um, a lot of the swords, spears, staves etc that I have especially because I uh, store them in a case that has foam inserts and they like they stack and some of the bigger models that almost don't fit um, just it bends them a little bit which isn't a really big deal because I use these miniatures, you know, my, my, right now I use them to paint, um, but I'm, I've got 40 or 50 that I'm working on right now to use in my D&D campaign, and they're, and like, the players in that are all friends of mine, they're not going to care if the uh, swords are a little droopy. So, I'm actually going to talk about being wargaming adjacent next, although I'm sure as I talk about this, because of how related the, two, the next two subjects are, I'm going to kind of flow from one to the other. But I consider myself Wargaming adjacent. And what I mean by that is I'm not part of the Wargaming hobby. I don't have any Wargaming minis um, or anything like that. I've, I've never bought any. I've never had them bought for me. Um, 
I have owned, I want to say three products made by Games Workshop or licensed by, no, like six things made and or licensed by Games Workshop. And I also, this happens about yearly. I will get into watching YouTube videos on Wargaming and is usually started by looking up just ways to get a little bit better at painting my Reaper Bones stuff. But, um, yeah, like right now I'm, I'm watching a lot of tabletop minions. Uh, this guy named Adam Smasher from Central Wisconsin. And I will, I'll link to his stuff because I think he's really awesome. And another reason why I'm going to link is... As I've pointed out before, the so, the whole point of this channel and the reason why you're staring at a small picture of a dragon head on a field of black is because I want this channel to be something that you can do in the background. You don't have to uh, sit here and actively watch. And Tabletop Minions, most of his videos are really good for doing that. And there's very, very few channels that are good for that. So that's, uh, I, I just want to sort of give a shout out to him and send you guys his way because he's awesome. But, um, beyond that, so, the several products I have owned throughout the years of Games Workshop is, once upon a time, someone gave me a copy of the game Blood Bowl. And I've since learned a bit more about the edition of Blood Bowl that... I had to have gotten and something about my edition was super weird because apparently the old edition of Blood Bowl that was around in like the 80s, the 90s, and the early 2000s and I I had to have gotten this sometime between 98 and about 2003. I don't know when in that. Probably the earlier part. Probably between like 98 and 2001 is when I got this. But at the time, apparently, uh, Blood Bowl came. You had to build the pieces just like you do with anything by Games Workshop, and they were all this really ugly gray and blah blah blah. And that's not what I remember. I don't have the game anymore. Um, I don't know what happened to it. Um, I still have a couple of the dice from it, which is super weird. And the reason why I know that is... I just remember... I really specifically remember... Three of the dice. Uh, one of them was... Red with white. And it was a 20-sided die. And I actually used that one decently often. It was for the running backs. And then there was this one big guy. And I... I love to give the ball to him because he could just plow through the center and it was really hard to knock him down because in Blood Bowl, 
It was it's essentially American soccer or American football and you uh you tried to knock the crap out of each other and the way you did that is you did attack rolls except the what you ended up having to do was the person who rolled the lowest one and this big hulk of a guy had the lowest die he had he rolled 2d6 what um whereas as i briefly mentioned you know the running backs rolled the d20 and so it's just something like 75 percent of the time if you had a running back that tr that tried to take this guy down you'd fail um and i think i've got a I've got a green D12 that I think also came from that game, but I don't have the box anymore. I don't have the board. I don't have the pieces, but the weird thing is, is the pieces, you know, again, they were supposed to be this dull gray and not put together, except the copy that I got was... I don't remember if it was new or used when I got it, but if it was used, it had been kept in really good condition. Um, the guys were put together and they were painted. Apparently they weren't supposed to be. I don't know what's up with that. But, yeah. I've also... I own... Dawn of War, all of the expansions, and I have played a little bit of Dawn of War 2, and also Warhammer Total War. Yeah. Or is it Total War Warhammer? I don't remember. It's a game by Creative Assembly and Sega. It's part of their Total War series. And it's coming out. And I've actually been considering doing... Like a review of that game on this channel. Um, or at least of the Total War series as a whole. And so I'm not going to talk too much about that. Um, so, you know, I watch... A lot of people who are really passionate about wargaming on YouTube. Um, I'll watch it for probably one to three months, about every year or so. Um, and I think with tabletop minions, I think I'm just gonna keep watching his stuff. I don't, I don't foresee my interest in him waning anytime soon. Um, but I don't own any minis or anything like that, um, or any wargaming games. Um, and I really think there, there are three things that you need to get into that. You need the desire to buy the stuff, the ability to buy the stuff, and what I mean by ability is... You need to be in a place at a time where you can buy it, whether it's in your office sitting in front of your computer buying it, or if it's in person at either a local gaming store or a convention or whatever. And the third thing you obviously need is the money to buy it. And as much as... I like wargaming, or at least the idea of it. I've never had those three quite align. Um, they've come close a few times. But when I've had the ability and the money, um, the desire 
loses out to the desire to spend the money on something else. And I've been pretty happy with my choices for the something else. But then again, I don't know what I'm missing because I've never bought any. And yes, uh, quick aside, this is very much becoming a Matt Coville short video. As in, it's not short at all. I was hoping it would be. Um, getting back on track really quick. So, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the the big games in Wargaming, which is going to include one that's completely out of print now. Um, I don't and I'm pretty sure it's because it was never as big as it wanted to be. But this is a pre the story that I have about it makes it really big in my life. Uh, so obviously, Games Workshop, the biggest people out there. Uh, when you think wargaming, you're probably thinking Games Workshop. Just like if you think role-playing games, Dungeons and & Dragons, and Wizards of the Coast come to mind. Or if you're old enough, TSR. Um, they're the behemoths. And they have two games. Well, they have several games. But their big two are Warhammer 40k, which is a sci-fi... Space Marines thing. And then there is... It used to be Warhammer Fantasy. It's now Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Um, and it's just... It's a fantasy thing. Um, I don't know if I like any of the models for that one. Just being totally honest. Although... And, you know, going back to Wargaming Adjacent, I love the ever-living shit out of Warhammer Fantasy role-playing game 2nd edition. Um, I think that is an awesome game. It is absolutely wonderful. Um, I've only... Okay, I say I say I love it. it. It's wonderful. I've only actually played it once, and that was with a really terrible DM, um, who crushed my desire to play it for several years. Because I came up with this really awesome backstory, and like part of the random character creation in that, you like roll how many siblings you have and then there's a way to figure out their gender and their age at least relative to your character and you can go through a truncated character creation thing with each of those siblings and your parents to figure out who they are and so I had this like two page part of my backstory like generally i will write maybe a half a page to a page of backstory um on a character especially when just starting out a game um there have only been two exceptions to that and this was one of them and i think i had like five pages of backstory and, like, two of them were just devoted to this guy's family and how he fits in with them and blah -de -de blah -de -de blah And five minutes into the session, I'm not joking about that, like, literally five minutes into the session, the DM had completely killed off my character's family. The entire family. Dead. First event. 
of the campaign was my character who was a halfling um he you know his town was having some sort of celebration of some kind and it got attacked by chaos and chaos killed his entire family and she's like what seriously really did you really just do that and he did. Um, I should have stopped playing with him then. I, I, I really should have. I didn't. Um, but anyway, I love that system. Which makes me kind of sad that I don't... I don't know if it's that I don't like the models for Age of Sigmar... Or if it's just, I don't like the painting choices that they made for the painted models that they show on their website. Um, their website being Games Workshop and Forge World. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's just I, I can't stand the models or the paint, and yeah, that's just kind of where i am with that um but games workshop the reason why i've never bought their stuff is their stuff is expensive um i can get like five or ten skeletons from reefer bones for less than ten bucks um an Age of Sigmar similar amount of skeletons is going to go for like 30. And it's just. Or the fact that the uh, rule books. And yeah, I know you can get the quick start rules for Age of Sigmar for free, but I'm really interested in the lore. So I would buy the book. And I think the Age of Sigmar book is like $50. And the Warhammer 40k book is similar. But then there's codexes for Warhammer 40k and then Age of Sigmar. If you want to do a lot of the stuff that I want to do with it, you have to buy the General's Handbook. And those are all... 25 to 40 dollars and on top of that it's the super expensive miniatures that you've got to cut out and then assemble and paint and i i'm not at a point in my life where i have enough disposable income that i can talk myself into really starting to get into anything by Games Workshop. And that that's kind of the long and short of it. Um, and so... Uh, you know, that's some of the games I wanted to talk about. Um, another one is... Fantasy Flight... And their... Star Wars... Uh, they have two Star Wars miniature games. Um, one is one is essentially a dog fighting game, and the other one is Armada, and that um, that uses like corsairs and destroyers and stuff. And I really want to be into either of those, or both of them. But every time that I've sat down... Oh, it's Star Wars X-Wing. That's what it's called. X-Wing is the dogfighting one. X-Wing is also the one I'm slightly more interested in. It's also the one that's easier to find the starting pack for. And... I want to get into that. I've had the chance a couple of times where I've had the money and the ability and the desire. However, 
that has the the money I've had each of those times. I could buy the starter kit, but not any expansions. And the starter kit comes with one X-Wing fighter and two TIE fighters. And yes, you can play the game apparently satisfactorily with those three miniatures. You can have a really good time from everything that I've heard. I don't want to play with three miniatures. I want to have like a full on squadron for both sides. And I mean that depending on, on how you define squadron, that's probably unrealistic. But I, I mean I want each side to field like five guys at least. But to do that, I've gotta buy the fifty dollar starter set. And then I've got to spend at least that much again, if not double that much again, to get the expansions that I want to feel like there's enough guys to make it worth playing. And that's unfortunate. But I feel better about the amount of money for Fantasy Flight because, number one, there's not as much like so go, going back to I mentioned the Varen guard earlier you can get three for a hundred bucks and if you're playing normal Age of Sigmar those are going to be three out of 20 to 50 guys that you have and now granted they're probably going to be among the most expensive of those three you know the most expensive among the most expensive of those 20 plus guys you know you, you can get five you know you can get a squad of you know their their normal basic infantry for like 30 bucks so i mean you're still talking about easily 200 dollars per army without buying the rule books and again you have to cut them off of the uh you, you have to cut them out of their packaging and then you've got to assemble them and glue them together and paint them and before you paint them you have to prime them and you have to seal them with something afterward or the paint's going to rub off <clears throat> and you have to do all of that before you sit down and play the game so you're spending hundreds of dollars and then putting in hours of work for the Star Wars game if you wanted you could spend 50 bucks, get three units, and open it up, set it up, and play without even leaving the store. It has everything you need to play the game inside of it. And that is wonderful. And. Yeah, it, it's a great game. I'd be, or at least it seems like it'd be a really fun game, and I'd be willing to spend the money on it. But I want to buy at least one or two expansions. I haven't had the, I haven't had the opportunity to buy it when having enough money to buy the expansions. Um, then there's a Privateer Press. Who one of my friends, who actually might hopefully watch this video, uh, he works for a Privateer Press, and they have War Machine and Hordes. Those are their two big games, which are, as I understand it, you can play. You know, like I can come up with a War Machine army, and you can come up with the Hordes army. 
and we can sit down and we can play each other with the armies that we just brought. Which is awesome. But it also makes me think that they're the same game. Um, and I want to get into that, especially because, you know, one of my really good friends works for that company. I want to support that company because they're employing a good friend of mine. However, no part of that game really interests me. I don't really like it. Um, like, I've, I've gone through Privateer Press's website, and I've looked at their stuff, and just, there was no fire there. It's just kind of like, oh, that's cool. And then moving on. Um, so, yeah. And those are kind of the big games out there. Um, in fact, there is a report. It's ICV2. Um, and it's... It's some sort of consumer. It used to be a magazine. Now it's just a website. And they track market data for a lot of different stuff. And one of them is non-collectible miniatures, which is what Wargaming falls under. And we've just talked about the top five. Yes. Um, because it goes... Or at least last I knew, it was uh, Fantasy Flight's X-Wing. Then it was Warhammer 40k, which when X-Wing two quarters ago uh, surpassed 40k, that was the first time that it ever happened. 40k was knocked off its throne for the first time since like the 1980s. Um, and then there's War Machine, Age of Sigmar, and then Hordes. Yeah, those are the top five. Um, but the sixth game I briefly want to talk about is Hairbrain Schemes Golem Arcana, which is a really cool idea. It used a app on your phone to make sure that Basically, that just kept track of the rules. So you could literally pick up the game in minutes and play it and understand what was going on. And you'd never forget a rule um, like, oh, this guy has cover, which means this modifier. You weren't going to forget that. You weren't going to forget one of the special abilities of your units. Um, and it was really cool. However, when I played it, I played it at a convention with my wife, and there were some connectivity issues, so we couldn't download it onto our phones, and so we had to go back to our hotel, download it there. And then go back the next day, I want to say, and get it out of the game's library. And then there's more connectivity issues with the pen that's supposed to talk over Bluetooth to your phone. That wasn't properly connecting. And it was just, it was a whole big hassle. And the game was fine. I liked it okay. My wife didn't really like it. But the thing is, 
because of all that time and effort we spent getting it to work to play the game the amount of enjoyment that came using the starter box wasn't equal to um it, it wasn't equal to the enjoyment I had. Or the enjoyment wasn't equal to the amount of time and effort I sunk into the game. So, that that was unfortunate. Because I could have bought it at, at PAX, which is where I was. And... If I didn't have the connectivity troubles and or the game went better than it did, um, I think I think I probably would have bought it and would have gotten into wargaming about the same time I got into painting minis. And like that'd be a bigger part of my life now. But I didn't. I had issues getting everything with Golem Arcana to connect and didn't buy it then and kept considering buying it. But again, the ability, desire, and money, all three of those need to line up and they never did. And then Hairbrain Schemes was like, we're canceling the game. And then I was like, oh, okay. Well then, I guess that ship sailed. So yeah, that's uh, that's kind of my, my spiel about wargaming. And that I'm wargaming adjacent and what that means. So wrapping up this video, that is... Ooh. It's like 47 and a half minutes, and I've still got one more thing to talk about. Terrible job trying to keep this short. Um, I have one more video ready for the channel that I will be uploading probably in the next 48 hours. That is an introduction slash teaser to a new series. Um, just need to figure out some things like titles and such. Um, but it is based off of Green Ronin's Fantasy Age system. I've got couple of friends who were meeting infrequently and playing through a campaign for the sole purpose of making it a story on here. So that should go up soon. And just a reminder, um, we are at a little over a thousand views and we I have a goal of hitting 10,000 views 10,000 lifetime views on the channel preferably by January so if we can do that that would be awesome and the best ways to do that are still watch the videos um, one view is great uh, a view that is the entire length of the video it's even better like my videos it, it's really simple really easy and I know it doesn't seem like it would do anything but since I've become a creator on here, I really see how it has. 
the more likes on a video, the more likely someone who stumbles across it is to watch it. And also, the more likes on a video, the more likely it is to show up in someone's stuff to view it. And comment. I love reading the comments. Um, I know I'm not the best at replying to them outside of my weekly updates, but please comment. Share the video. Uh, if you have social media that you want to share it on, share it on social media. If you have a friend who you're like, hey, I think they would dig these videos, please share it with them. We have been stuck at 18 subscribers for about three months now. Let's, uh, let's break 20. And again, subscribe if you haven't. If you've made it this far through my video and you haven't turned away yet, I'm pretty sure you're going to like my stuff. Um, notification bell. You can definitely hit that. That way YouTube will let you know any and every time that I upload as soon as I upload. I have notifications set on a lot of my favorite YouTubers. So, but yes, that is going to be all for today. A uh, 52 or 53 minute video or just kind of word vomit. Um, thank you very much for watching. And remember, tune in next time.